Okay, hello everyone. So today I'm showing you how to make this top, which I'm wearing right now. I have made this top to go in kind of like a twin set um, with the skirt that I made about a week or so ago. Um, so it's made out of the same wool fabric. It's fully lined. Um, so since it is made of wool fabric, it's not going to be itchy or anything on the skin. Um, it's something that can be made out of really any kind of fabric. Um, probably like light to medium weight. It has an open zipper at the back um, for ease of getting it on and off so it doesn't have to be a stretch fabric. And yeah, I'm so happy with how this turned out. I like the kind of like 60s vibe it gives with the colors and the shapes and everything in it. Um, yeah, I'm so happy with it. And I'll show you how to make it now. Um, also, if I sound a little bit nasally or anything in this video, it is because I have a little bit of a cold. So if the voiceover is a little bit off, that is why. Okay, things you'll need are the pattern, which is available on my Etsy store. Lining fabric, which matches the main body of the top. So my top is going to be pink and blue, but pink is going to be the main colour, so pink lining. Fabric for the main body of the top, I suggest getting about a metre, metre and a half of the main colour. For me, this is this pink wool. And then the contrast, get about a metre, and for me, it's this blue wool. Um, this is the same wool I used for my A-line skirt because this is going to be a matching set. Um, however, if you want, you can use any sort of cotton, you can use any sort of um, kind of medium weight fabric, a denim would work, anything like that. And you also don't need to have the contrast if you don't want to. You will also need matching thread. So I have got a couple of pinks because the colour is kind of in between these two and then one for the blue. Um, I need blue and pink because I'm going to be doing top stitching so I'll need contrast threads for both of them. If you saw my skirt you'll know what I mean. I used the pink thread on top of the blue and then the blue on top of the pink so it had a bit of detail. You also need an open-ended zip. It's really important that it's open-ended otherwise you won't be able to get the garment on and off. Um, I've chosen this light blue because it's the only colour I could get. Um, they are usually pretty hard to find open um, and in a range of colours and a range of styles. I chose an invisible zip as well just because the colour doesn't match this way. It will be hidden um, and I'll still be able to take it on and off because it has the open end. Okay, so out of the contrast fabric, you will need this um, front into back panel piece cut on the fold along this edge so it will fold out like so and this is going to sit at the very front of the garment and wrap around to the back and then in the main fabric you need a pair of the collar stand piece so they will mirror out like so you'll also need a pair of the front piece making sure you mark in the top of the dart and the notches so they will sit like this. You'll also need a back pair marking in the dart as well there so they will sit like that. You also need a pair of the sleeves so they will sit out like that and you need to mark in the notches. So this is for the back to match on the back piece and then this is to match the side seam. Also make sure you cut it along this angle so that when it folds up, it will match the same width as up here. In the lining, you need two of the sleeve lining in a pair again, so they will come out like this and mirror each other. Again, marking in any notches. You will also need the front lining piece, this time cut on the fold down here. And again, mark in any of the darts. So this is going to fold out like so. You also need collar stand facing in the lining as well. Again this is on the fold at the front just like that and the back same type of thing you mark in the um, dart and the notches down there marking the notch on the armhole as well but this one isn't cut on the fold there is a one centimeter seam at the back which is where the zip is going to go. And so all I'm going to do is make all of the darts. So I'm going to do that by matching the notches down here 
and folding up to where I marked in the end just like so and when we sew this we'll start here just outside of the notch and sew up to about uh, just under a centimeter below the end point and then we'll stitch the last bit right along the edge and leave the tail of thread. So we're going to do this to both front pieces, both back pieces and both lining pieces. So make sure when you're doing this that you have mirror pieces. See how these are the opposite of each other? So it's important that when you're marking it and also when you're stitching it that they're looking the opposite and exact same thing on the back. Okay, this dart at the front um, of the lining is a little bit different. As you can see, part of it's been cut out. This was just to remove some of the bulk. So all that means is for the first little bit, you're going to be starting one centimetre in from this edge. Stitch all the way up until here and then it will begin just matching up to this point here. Okay, so this is the front lining piece with the dart zone and a little tail. Um, the back piece is the same thing, the back in the wool is the same, and then the front, same thing with the tail. The tail is important because it helps to create a softer curve at the end there instead of just finishing it off with a back stitch like you usually would. I'm also going to press these, so this one gets pressed towards the side seam. So it's going to press over like this um, and I'm just going to take that in and iron it so that it's nice and smooth. Okay, I'm going to put aside all the lining pieces for the moment and focus on these pieces. So I'm going to lay the front pieces with the right sides up and I'm going to place the back pieces over the top with the right sides down so that they're facing each other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch the um, top shoulder seam and the side seams as well. Okay, so the side seam has been stitched and then pressed towards the back and the shoulder seam as well pressed to the back. Um, and that was just one centimetre seam allowance. So now I'm going to take the collar stand piece and what I'm going to do is making sure I place the back at the back and this is marked on the piece so if you get confused just rematch it up. So the back is going to go at the back here and then the front at the front. I'm going to stitch it along this curve here and same with this piece on this one. Okay, so I've attached the collar piece on. What I'm going to do now is press it so the seams are going upwards and then I'm going to stitch over the top. The stitching is completely optional. Um, it's just the style I want. So I'm gonna do two rows of stitching um, just to add a little bit of detail. And I'm gonna do this in blue to contrast the pink and match the blue panel that we'll be putting in later. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is completely optional. So if you don't want this style, then you don't have to do it. Okay, now we're gonna do the exact same thing, but to the lining. So placing this with the right side up, I'm going to take the back pieces and do match up the side seam and the shoulder seam. And then after stitching that in the same way we did the collar up before, I'm going to put the collar on this piece, matching it from the back to the front and then around to the other piece because this one is on the fold, unlike the main body fabric. The lining is now all attached at the shoulder and the side seam and that was just with one centimetre stitching and then similarly one centimetre all around the neck. Um, I'm just going to go and press this so these are facing up, all the seams are facing towards the back and all the darts are facing towards the back. Okay, so I've done the top stitching on both of these just for decoration. 
Um, and now I'm going to attach the central blue piece. So what I'm gonna do is with the right side facing down, I'm going to pin and sew all along this edge and be careful when you get to the curve because that's gonna be the most difficult part. And then stitch all along here until we get to the back where it finishes. And then I'm going to fold it back and press it so every seam is facing in towards the blue and then stitch over that with pink thread and make sure as well that you match this notch up with the edge here so that will match that perfectly before any pressing or top stitching can happen once this blue panel is attached you have to snip into this curve so that it will press down flat so I'm just going to go around and about one centimeter 1.5 apart right down into the stitching line but don't cut the stitches because otherwise it will all unravel just around the tight part of that curve should be enough. So now I will press this down on the iron and then on this side once it's all pressed down do two rows of stitching like I did here except this time it will be in pink. After I do that I'm going to overlock the bottom hem. Um, this is because this will be turned up and left raw. If you don't have an overlocker, you can either just leave it raw if it's a fabric that's not going to fray very much or just use a zigzag stitch. While at the overlocker, I'm also going to overlock the edge of the sleeve on the main piece and also the lining piece because again, this is going to be left raw and same with this one. I'm also going to overlock the bottom edge of the lining as well. Um, again, same reason because it's going to be left. Okay, so both of the sleeve pieces have been overlocked. The lining sleeve pieces as well. The body of the lining has been overlocked at the hem as well. And this has also been overlocked at the hem and then stitched along the blue seam. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the sleeve pieces and stitch the side of them. I'm gonna do this for the main body and the lining as well. Okay, so it's important you make sure you have two opposite pieces. So I can see the notch here and the notch here for the back meaning that these two are mirror pieces. Also, when you're stitching this, make sure you follow the seam, how it kind of comes in and then out again. Um, it's only subtle, but it will just mean when we turn this up, it's gonna be the same width here as it is up here. Okay, so these sleeves have been stitched, so have these. Now I'm going to press it so the seam places the back of the sleeve and then I'm going to fold it up four centimeters. Um, these ones we're going to leave because they don't have a hem on them. Okay, so turning the sleeve um, right side round, we're going to attach it to the lighting piece. So we need to match this back notch to the back notch on this piece. And all I'm going to do is put the side seams together first. Then I'll match the notch at the top. So this top notch goes against the um, shoulder seam. And then I'll pin around the rest, making sure that any ease, and there is a little bit of ease, but not too much, is um, just placed around the top of the sleeve. And then I'll do the exact same thing on this side as well with the other sleeve. Okay, now these have been pressed, we're going to attach the sleeves to the main body of the piece so we'll turn it the right side round 
Um, just like we did for the lining, I make sure we're matching the back notches. And first thing we'll do is match the side seams together and pin that. Then we'll go through and match the other notches and pin the rest of it. Again, making sure the ease is kept up on the top of the sleeve. And we'll do the same on this side and then we'll sew. Okay, so now both of these have the sleeve inserted, um, the body and the lining as well. What we're going to do is attach the body and the lining together. So we're gonna do this at the neckline. So what I'm gonna do is placing the right sides together so right side up and then right side down we're just going to pin along the top edge of the collar so after attaching this along the neck i snipped into it just so that it would fold up a bit better I then pressed it so that it all remained on the inside of the garment. You don't want any lining showing through when you're looking at the front. And I also edge stitched it. This again will help um, prevent the lining from showing through. I then also added double row of stitching at the edge, just turning it up at the hem like so. And I did this in pink to contrast the blue. And now I'm going to insert the zipper. So this is a zipper I'm gonna be using. It's an invisible open-ended zipper. It's really important that it's an open-ended zipper. It must be able to come undone, otherwise you won't be able to get the garment on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pin it in place along the main body fabric. And I'm gonna pin it in place on both sides with the zip done up. This is to ensure when it's done up, all the panel lines are gonna match but I'm gonna sew it with the zipper undone because it's gonna be easier to sew that way. Okay, so if I get the piece with the right side over and I place this down on the way I want it to flip over like so, and then I'm going to pin it there. I'm also just going to snip off the end here because it's this really hard plastic bit and I know my machine needle won't be able to go through that. And so I'm going to pin this on the other side as well. A good way also to make sure that all the panel lines match up is to grab some chalk, make a mark here where the panel line is and bring that over to the other side as well. And I'll do it for this top part as well. So that's around about where it needs to sit. So now taking this, flipping it this way around. So we've got the two pieces here. I'm going to pin this against this one. There, matching up with the chalk and making sure it matches up with this side too. And I'll match this chalk. Okay, now we've got the zip attached. I'm going to undo it. And then to stitch down the lining, we will place it with right sides together. like this starting from the top and pinning down the lining won't reach the full length of the zip and we're just going to stitch over the top here and when we turn it back out it will be all bagged out okay so now that the zipper is fully enclosed um, and can't be seen any of the seams. The whole garment is also enclosed because of that. We will add a hook and eye to the top. This is because I couldn't get a zip long enough for the whole back 
if you can get a zip which is the exact length then that's probably best um, however spotlight only carried this length of zip um, with an open end so I was kind of limited for choice so I'm going to put that um, in at the top here but before I do that I'm going to go and stitch up the top here with two rows of blue stitching to match the two rows here and on the sleeve where we folded it before I'm going to stitch on the outside two rows of blue as well Okay, thank you so much for watching um, I'm really happy with how this turned out personally I think it's a really cute little set and because it is wool I feel like I can put a pair of tights with it and a jacket and wear it in winter but I can also wear it probably in like spring and um, maybe in summer if it's a colder day um, but yeah I hope you enjoyed the video the pattern will be up on Etsy hopefully around the same time the video goes up so don't forget to check that out if you're interested. I'll also be putting it up in a pair with the skirt for a slightly reduced price. Um, so yeah, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all that fun stuff. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!